Trauma is not just a feeling. It's one of the worst manifestations of stress and anxiety. Healthcare workers have been experiencing the symptoms of PTSD and moral injury for decades, but the pandemic is escalating their prevalence. Dr. Gigi Dunn, a doctor with years of experience in operating rooms, says that treating the overworked and overwhelmed healthcare providers requires changes deep within the culture of the medical industry, starting with how hospitals and staff acknowledge their pain. The human brain is built to withstand life's hardest challenges. Fear, stress, nervousness. Your body can handle it, but trauma can leave a mark. When you're a healthcare provider and you see images like these every day, your brain could change. When you're under this immense amount of pressure where you have uh, overwhelming stress, overwhelming anxiety that's chronic in nature, then it burns out your capacity to be uh, responsive, thoughtful, and actually to be your best self. And then as a result, you start uh, separating yourself. You're not as enthusiastic. You pull away and uh, you feel like there's no purpose in your life. And of course, as we have seen in innumerable occasions, we have healthcare workers, physicians who end up uh, committing suicide because they feel their failures. They have the sense of moral injury uh, because they just can't take it. Doctors and nurses on the front lines of COVID are silently battling with PTSD, stemming from something experts call moral injury. Injury basically occurs when uh, you do something that is against your moral code. So, for example, if uh, you know you have to keep ventilating a patient, even though uh, you know you you know that this is, you know, increases suffering and their likelihood of surviving is basically nil because the family's not ready to let go or because, you know, there's not a process in place to really uh, have enough communication to, you know, do what you have to do. So that I hear from a lot of healthcare workers is very difficult for them. Healthcare professionals that were already stressed and burned out before any of the pandemic started. There was already an epidemic of suicide of healthcare professionals, people leaving the bedside, people leaving the profession, and there were lots of struggles about what to do about that. Then, on top of that, here comes COVID. And they rose to the occasion, as health professionals do, because that's what we're taught. They got through the worst part of COVID. They got through all of the different things that we know about. They thought they had that in the rearview mirror. And now, suddenly, it's back with a vengeance. Seeing so many patients die in such a short time frame is traumatizing to a lot of providers. And that's dangerous for several reasons. Not only does trauma trigger physical responses, but it also shuts down parts of your brain that make rational decisions. Healthcare professionals are very resilient. We're taught to be profoundly resilient. But sometimes that resilience can actually get us in trouble because it means that if we're not aware of the trauma and the moral injury that we're feeling, and if we don't work through that, then at the end, of all of this, if we just keep going and we don't change things, we don't work through what has happened before, we can absolutely end up with physical and emotional illness. Dr. Doty says that acknowledging trauma is crucial for healing. It's the first step to change. The second step uh, is what we know is to give people the opportunity to relax and decompress. And that can be simply having a room that's uh, uh, you know, stocked with adequate uh, 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 supplies, if you will, uh, and chairs where you can just sit and relax for 10 or 15 minutes and uh, maybe even have nice music and have it quiet uh, to allow you to recover and recharge. Uh, the other is to have outlets where people can express their frustration uh, or their feelings with empathic uh, individuals who can give reassurance, can uh, offer them uh, different techniques to practice. 
Dr. Gigi Dunn, a doctor with years of experience, says destigmatizing PTSD and trauma will help doctors cope with it, but also taking time for reflection is important. We really need programming to help them with trauma, PTSD, how to live a healthier day, and why self-care is so important in terms of care for others. To Dr. Dunn, self-care means being compassionate with yourself, connecting with people you have close relationships with, and finally, stress reduction tools like walking outside dancing, singing, and even prayer. Without implementing hospital programs that cover these topics, Dr. Dunn says we're headed for more burnout and possibly more suicides. If we can intervene early on, then we can prevent burnout, we can support PTSD, we can support and give tools for moral injury. We can help people stay engaged with what connected them to medicine to begin with. We can keep nurses at the bedside. But the point of all of this is we've got to intervene early and we've got to intervene now. It's one of those circumstances where you can't wait till all of this is over and then we start to do programming. We can do broader and deeper programming then, but at this point we need to start getting things into our healthcare professionals exactly at this time. For more information, please visit carecollaboratory.org.